Thanks for joining us. We start off on the rink where this graphic is no longer applicable. Fans filled up these seats to watch him perform. Coaches remember the kind of person Dominique was off the field. With 30 miles of hard snow to get through, this is one race that's better left to man's best friend. We'll get you out of here on this question. It's 80s night tonight. Any uh, any flashbacks of uh, your youth seen out there? <laughs> but we're not going to go out on a called third strike. We've got a great show with highlights and reaction from the Far West League Championship game. I'm Cameron Kramer, and I'm taking the plunge. We we'll begin at Lumberjack Arena where Humboldt State women's basketball was looking to snap a five-game losing streak. They're taking on Sonoma State. Some good news. The Seawolves are in the midst of a five-game skid as well. That means one team gets back on the win column tonight while the other makes it six losses in a row. It was a homecoming for Taylor Acosta, the former McKinleyville guard, playing on the opposite end of the court from old teammate Amanda Kunst. HSU holding a three-point lead in the second half. Ellie Anderson increases it to five with this tough reverse layup. That makes the score 40-35. One young Jacks fan loving that. He's got the moves and feeling it tonight. Lisa Petty was feeling it from beyond the arc. She hits back-to-back -back three pointers to put Humboldt up 46-42. Petty hit five three pointers in this one, but her scoring not limited to long range. She's showing off her dribbling skills here behind the back, then drives in for two. Lady Jacks up 52-50. Petty up to 26 points with five minutes to play. Four minutes to play, and it's HSU's other senior getting in on the three-point action. Katie Richard takes the Kelly Kime pass and buries the long ball. Richards finished with five, home team up 57-55. With 30 seconds left, it's Petty at the line with 29 points. It was her previous career high. This is the new one. Petty is all smiles, as are her fellow Lady Jacks. They win 66-58 and snap the five-game losing streak. Ellie Anderson with 10 points. Petty moves into sixth place on HSU's all-time scoring list. The CR ladies are happy for two reasons. First, forward Allie Whip is back with the team after missing eight games with a high ankle sprain. And second, to finally play some home games after a preseason spent mostly on the road, Corsair is taking on Feather River. CR looking to duplicate last year's 8-2 record in the GVC. Allie Whip playing on home court for the first time since her injury. It doesn't look like there's any rust. The inside bucket is good game, tied at four. Still early in the first half, more inside work for the Corsairs. A lot like the last highlight, Chelsea Roan with the baseline drive to put the home team up by one. Then some sharp shooting from Redwoods. Kiana Bell connects from beyond the arc. CR up 11-7. More from Bell, this time on the defensive end. She comes away with the steal and gets it to Roan for the really tough finish. That caps off a 9-0 run by the Corsairs. Then in the second half, the Golden Eagles would tie the game up. But late in the half, it's the long ball that's putting the Corsairs ahead. Kristen Rook spots up and drains the three-pointer. CR up 58-45. With a minute to go, Redwoods puts the final nail in the coffin with another three-pointer. Chrissy Robbins for three of her 11 points. CR starts off conference play with a win and takes the game 67-55. Allie Whip leads the way with 15. The Humboldt County weather is well publicized and early season rainouts postponed two Crabs games, then returned this week to threaten games once more, but instead it was all hands on deck to get the grass beneath the players' feet in proper condition. We give credit where credit is due and take a closer look at the groundskeeping duo that keeps the Arcata ballpark looking its best. From home plate, all the way to the warning track, and everything in between. It's a tall order for the Crabs groundskeeping crew especially when you factor in Humboldt County weather. The only things we are able to tarp during this time of the year are the mound and home plate. So um, it, it does create a bit of a challenge and we try to always have some diamond dry and other, other products available that we can kind of quickly clean it up. Uh, Fred's the man at working the magic on that. He's referring to Fred Lomelli, who's about as constant a presence at games as bats and balls. I've been working at least down here for 38 years. And in those four decades, he's seen highlights, lowlights, and even no lights. The lights would go out during the game. You had to get up on the pole, turn on, the, turn off the circle breakers, turn them on, so they, the lights would come back on. Just you know, all these little things that were happening out here. But you know, now with everything going the way it is right now, it's been great. So, you know, modernization is is the big key. <laughs> now you call somebody, and the lights get turned on. The lights may be almost automatic, but keeping the field in playing condition is a labor-intensive job, especially when you factor in whatever Mother Nature has up her sleeve. Most of the challenges are just, uh, if it rains, trying to get the infield together. With the new uh, drainage system we have, the outfield and all that lawn areas drain really well, but now it's the infield. It takes about three hours to prep the field and get it ready and um, mow the infield and whatnot, pick up any rocks and debris and stuff like that that can, that can cut or hurt the players when they're sliding or, or playing the game. 
Speaking of playing in games, in nearly four decades of being around the ballpark, how has Fred seen Crabs baseball evolve? I say it's changed by before the, the fellas would come in at the time that they were supposed to come in and take the field and do their batting practice and then do the game. But now, with the players nowadays, you know, it's just more they're, they're here earlier and they, they want to do more. And you better believe the field will be in proper condition with perennial rye and bluegrass ready and waiting for the call to play ball. Lisa Petty is at her best when time is winding down, as the seconds tick away her shots always seem to find the bottom of the basket. So when the clock started running on her college basketball career, there was no shortage of motivation heading into her senior season. You have one year left and you just want to do your best, and so there wasn't a one specific thing, but I think it was just being more consistent all around to where the rest, like, helping any way I can on the court. Jody Gleason has become accustomed to Petty's contributions on the scoreboard. It says her biggest improvement is one that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. The opponents focus on her every game and she still finds a way to get it done, but she's really stepped up um, her leadership responsibilities and really is trying to get the team to gel and play together. That leadership is being counted on more than ever. Petty is one of the team's two seniors and is in her third season as a captain a role and responsibility that Petty has no problem embracing. It means lead, show people uh, what they need to do and how they need to do it and um, hold yourself accountable along with everyone else. She's got the accountability part down, averaging 18 points on the year and recently setting a new career high with 15 rebounds against Pomona. But Petty's performances are more than just points and passes. As anyone can see, they're painful, a physical style pouncing on loose balls and driving to the basket. Point guard Katie Richards provided an assist and calls Petty's playing style. Passion, I think, is the number one thing. Like, you can tell, like, if we're down or, like, haven't had a few points, like, you know Lisa's the person that's going to put it in the basket. She uh, just, you know, wants to win, finds a way, chases down the ball when, when, and gets those big ones in, in clutch situations. So, you know, just a, a, a great all-around player, but also has that competitive spirit. And as a senior, will that competitive spirit carry over to when her time at HSU comes to a close? I've always played two or three sports at the same time, so I haven't focused on like a specific career plan. But after this year, hopefully finding a job that has to do with, I don't know, something I enjoy doing and then making it, um, I don't know, finding my niche in the in real world. I don't know, it's scary. But so is driving the lane with the game on the line. It's provided plenty of bruises, but also plenty of victories. Cameron Kramer, News Channel 3.